How much do you really know about the horse's hoof? Barefoot is booming. You read about it everywhere nowadays. It's all over the internet. There are boots coming out left, right and centre. All different types of boots. All loads of different types of boots. Because there's now a demand. People are taking their horses' shoes off and people are going barefoot. Are they taking the shoes off because they realise that the shoes might be causing some kind of damage to the horse's feet? I think that may be one reason. Are they taking their horse's shoes off for economic reasons? Or are they taking their horse's shoes off just because they feel that it's the right thing to do? Well, I think there's quite a few of those too. We have this dedicated magazine, for instance. It, it's been going since 2013. Barefoot was quite popular then, but now where we're in issue 34, Barefoot has taken off. It is so popular. People are really hungry to find out more and more about their horse's hooves. But there's still an awful lot of confusion out there, especially when it comes to owners relentlessly trying to fix individual issues that their horse has got with their hooves. Or they just can't get a barefoot hoof care professional to come and visit them at their property or at their yard because they live too far away. It's still difficult for some people, for many people who want to start that barefoot journey and they want to really kick on and really, yes, I want to go barefoot with my horse. One thing that we do is we put on workshops. And I thought in this video, um, I'd tell you a few little bits and pieces uh, of the things that we do on these workshops that really, really help owners to understand their horse's hooves. People just love it. They can't get enough of it. They just want to learn more and more and more. And that's fab. And that's why we started this YouTube channel. And before we get into the video, for those of you who don't know who I am, let me introduce myself. I'm Lindsay Setchell. I'm the editor of the Barefoot Horse magazine. I'm also a presenter on Barefoot Live. I started up the organization Hoofing Marvelous in the UK some many years ago. I have have lots of barefoot horses and I have helped transition hundreds of barefoot horses around the world. Me and my team have helped transition hundreds of horses around the world. And I'm an ex-science teacher. If you can teach hormonal teenagers, believe me, you can sit in front of a camera on YouTube. Our mission, my mission, is to rid the world of unnecessary lameness. That's what this YouTube channel is about. We want to make it's a better place for all our horses to live in. We want them to be sound. We don't want them to be lame. I'd love you to stick around. And if you've got comments for videos that you'd like me to do in the future, then stick them in the comments below. And obviously, please do like ta -da, and subscribe and click that notification bell. You will then get notified every single time a new video comes out. And like I said, we're trying at the moment. We're really pushing. We're trying to get these videos out once a day. We are so mental. And I would love you to join me in making the world a better place for our equines. So, are you with me? Let's get into it. <laughs> so, can knowing more about horse and hoof care really help your horse? Surely, the more that you know, then the more you're going to get right. Yeah? Well, no, actually. I thought you were going to say yes then, Lindsay. There's actually an awful lot of confusion out there. You see it all over the internet. People are confused about the diet. They're confused about the management. They're confused about the trimming. What does species specific actually mean? My horse isn't natural. I ride it. So how can I keep it in a very species specific way? My horse wears his hooves off. So he has to wear shoes. His shoes get worn down into thin razor blades. So I have to put the monos he'd wear his feet off but you know something when people say about wearing their horse's hooves off where are those bloody nubs on the internet i've never seen a picture of those bloody nubs but joking apart we have some serious problems in the equine world we really really do on the one hand we've got lots of people commenting on our posts saying that their horse has confirmational issues which is why they can't go barefoot or they wear their feet off because they're riding over stony terrain or they do an awful lot of riding out on roads and so they need shoes because of that wearing those horses shoes down thin or your horse has a hoof crack and you're gluing it or you're putting like a Meccano plate over it and screwing screws on to keep it in place to hold that crack together and then putting a shoe on to hold it all together 
Okay, back to the essence of this video. So learning more about the natural horse and the hoof care. We've been putting on workshops for the last 10 years in the UK and we always, always fill them up. We have waiting lists and we have people loving it and we've never had a complaint. Why? Because it blows people's minds when they really start to really get down to the nitty gritty and learn more about the horse's hoof and, and a species specific diet and what causes hoof pathologies and what's a correctly balanced natural hoof. What does it look like? Interesting facts about the anatomy and the leg and how to keep your horse in a manner to keep them happy and sound for years and years and years well, basically for the rest of their lives. And some people have returned, <laughs> and some sad people, I'm sorry, I'm not going, <laughs> some poor people have returned for quite a few workshops um, because they just love it. Like Gail, who said, I've attended three workshops over the last six years and each one has helped me understand better how the overall health of the horse often shows up in their hooves and vice versa. I've learned so much about equine diets, ideal management, anatomy, how to identify and treat abscesses, about laminitis and how to manage the horse back to good health. And of course, how to perform a natural trim. The courses are good fun, educational and highly interactive and aimed at private horse owners I highly recommend it and Dawn said these workshops are fantastic I've now attended two workshops in two years went back for a second helping as it was and still is the best thing I've ever done for the welfare of my horses thank you very much Dawn I've learned more from these workshops in the Barefoot Live group in the last two years than I have over the rest of my life it has changed the way I keep my horses totally in every sense I can't recommend it highly enough. Okay, okay, so we are blowing our own trumpets here a little bit, but I didn't want this video to be an advert for our workshops, so it's not gonna be about that at all. But it is just an illustration of how people absolutely love learning more and more about the horse's hooves and, and how I am finding people coming on these workshops at the beginning of the workshops and I say to them, you know, at the end of these three days, you're going to probably know an awful lot more than many other equine owners out there. And they're like, yeah, right, at the beginning. And at the end, they're like, wow, I can't believe what I've just done. <laughs> I've just come through all this. How did I not know all of this before? But what do you do if you can't physically come onto these workshops? You might not live in the UK. What happens if you live in Canada or, or the US or South Africa or, or Australia or New Zealand? What are you going to do then? Well, stay tuned, folks, because soon you're going to have the opportunity to get onto an online workshop which is gonna be really cool. And that's what we've got planned for the future. Anyway, enough of all that. I thought I'd do a did you know little section in this about some things that we teach on the workshop. So I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about a very cute little bone. It looks like a pair of lips called the navicular bone. In fact, humans have navicular bones as well. Did you know that? That's interesting, isn't it? But what is the navicular bone? Well, the navicular bone is actually what they call a sesamoid bone. And the horse has three sesamoid bones in its leg, two at the back of the fetlock joint, and it has one in the coffin joint. And that one is called the navicular bone and is a bone that causes an awful lot of people a great deal of distress. So the DDFT or the deep digital flexor tendon needs those clever little sesamoid bones in the leg so it can be spaced away from the joint at a specific angle. So in a natural foot like the feet we see on sound healthy barefoot horses or or the wild horses that live in the Great Basin of the US they have their sesamoid bones, their joints, their tendons, all working in perfect synergy with each other. And that all works perfectly fine until you get problems with the feet, such as high heels or pain in the back of the foot, the caudal foot, as we call it. Pain in the back there will cause the horse to try not to put that part of the foot down and start walking around on his toe. And as soon as he does that and goes toe first and heel second, that deep digital flexor tendon starts to rub over that navicular sesamoid bone in a manner that it was never designed to do. And that causes heat. And remember at school, if you do this friction, that causes heat. And that is the essence of what causes navicular pain. But I'll go into that in even more detail in another video. So that DDFT has changed around the angle of the sesamoid bone and that friction be begins, which causes the heat, which then causes the pain. And that my friends, in a nutshell, 
is navicular syndrome. So learning about little facts like the sesamoid bones are really important in understanding how problems can begin in your horse and helping other people understand how problems can begin in their horses. And then on the workshops, we have the trimming element. And you know something? Here we go. We always get an awful lot of flack. And I really mean an awful lot of flack from owners and professionals who hold their hands up in horror and exclaim, you cannot teach people how to trim in a three-day course. You certainly, certainly can't teach the intricacies of trimming, the nuances, how to get your eye in on balance, that zen of the hoof. You can't teach all that in three days. Absolutely. You can't teach them how to understand a distorted foot, how to trim a distorted foot. All of those sorts of things are what pro trimmers learn or pro hoof care specialists learn. And they can't do that in three days. But no, 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 no. But what you can do is you can learn what a balanced hoof looks like. You can discuss this with your professional like you probably couldn't discuss it before. You can l learn what a natural foot looks like, what a wild hoof should look like and, and how that relates to your horse's natural foot. You can learn about the different parts of the hoof, where the white line is, the outer and the inner hoof wall, and why this is all significant to the hoof of your horse. And you can learn how hard it is to trim. And therefore, get a whole new respect for those people who are now trimming your horse's hooves, <laughs> because it's actually really quite hard. And there are some people out there that pick it up actually really quickly and are able to be proficient enough to keep their horse's hooves maintained in between trims. But it all starts with getting your hands on the hoof because that's the only way to really truly appreciate what are all of those things that I've just said. But from anything else, it's not only mind blowing, but it's an awful lot of good fun. <laughs> and just as a side note, stay tuned. These courses are going to one day hopefully in the very near future, go online. So it doesn't matter where you live in the world, you're actually going to be able to access this information that we put out on these workshops and you're gonna be able to access it online. Hurrah! It's going to be great. So now, there I've said it, so I, we better get on and do it. I hope you like this video. I hope that it bust a few myths about workshops and what we do and that we're not actually trying to train trimmers. And I hope it showed you some things that you didn't know before. Perhaps you learned something about the navicular bone and about sesamoid bones and, and the fact that they're spacer bones. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to know. Let's start this dialogue. Let's start chatting about it and talk to me talk to my team we can help you work through this awful mire the treacle and all that noise out there and we can find the right solutions for you and your horse and thank you to those lovely subscribers that have already subscribed to my channel i can't believe it we had 50 in in just over 24 hours 50. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And lots of comments. It's been great. Um, we, for instance, Rebecca said, thank you, Lindsay. So glad you are doing this YouTube channel to help spread your extensive knowledge on barefoot to help horses all over the world. Really looking forward to hearing more. Thank you, Rebecca. Hearts. And Laura Blow says, yes, so happy you have a YouTube channel now. More hearts, more hearts, more hearts. So please, please join us. Don't forget though, there are ways you can find more information. You can get the magazine, la 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 la, issue 33. <sighs> you can join Barefoot Life TV. You can come on one of our workshops if you're in the UK or on Ireland, or you can sit there going, come on folks, get this online training sorted out. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do finally, eventually. But what can you do now? Well, you can share this video on Facebook or on Instagram, put it on your story. <coughs> tag me in it, cause I'll see it. And uh, tag the magazine, cause we'll repost it. And if we repost it, that'll be fun. And don't forget the reason that we are here. We are here to change the world for equines. We are here to rid the world of unnecessary lameness. And together we can do this, together we can work through this and we can get barefoot success for you and your horse. And I nearly forgot my email list. If you join up to my email list, I will send you a little video every single week exclusively for my email subscribers where we will be talking about all kinds of interesting things. Check out my other videos on my channel here and here. And in my next video, I'm gonna be talking to you about 
track systems, why we use them, how to set one up, and of course, what to do if you can't put up a track system, because not everybody can track, right? That's all going to be in my next video. So thank you again for sticking around all the way to the end of this video. I'm so, so excited that you're here and I hope that you like the channel and, and I hope it just spurs you on to keep your horse barefoot, healthy and sound. I can't wait to hear what you think of the videos. Put your comments below and thanks so much for being here and I'll see you again, <coughs> excuse me, in the next video. So bye-bye barefooters and bye-bye everybody that wants to go barefoot. Bye-bye.